Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, and I, I like, I like the we would like to call our meeting to order at this time. We'll have the roll call of Mr. Hopkins. Dominic. Present. Lyndon Johnson. Jackson. Lynn. Bowman. Cawthorn. Gage Present. Watts. Present. Middleton. Yo. Atkins. Here. Chavez. Here, sir. Smith. Lewis Johnson. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, sir. At this time, we'll ask you to silence your cell phones. Please stand and join us in the invocation and pledge of allegiance by Commissioner Doug Dominic and Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, O God, for this day. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for your gift of life. Lord, we pray that you would, by your spirit and by your power, lead us, guide us, and direct us, O Lord. We pray, O God, that you'll give us wisdom, give us knowledge, O God, that we might do those things that are best for this parish and that are pleasing in your sight. Bless all that are in attendance on today, O God. And this is our prayer. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'll place the flag, repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, commissioners. <laughs> Mr. Todd, I don't have any agenda additions. Do you have any? No, ma'am, I do not. Okay, next item, please, sir. Uh, citizen comments, I have no cards. Okay, citizens who wish to address the commission must fill out a comment card and forward to the president or the clerk of the commission. Com comments by any citizen will be limited to three minutes. Next item, please, sir. Next, we move to visitors. Uh, have COHAB presentation. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon. Good everybody. afternoon and welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank everybody for allowing us to come out and speak today. Um, as many of you know, uh, COHAB will be celebrating our 10th anniversary in 2020, and we know that uh, the growth that we've seen in the small businesses and the startups and the students that have come through our doors. Uh, uh, their growth and success is due in such a large part to the support that we've received from Caddo Parish and from this commission and, and we do want to thank you for that um, for the opportunity to tell you about some of the growth and the changes that COHAB has seen uh, since we last came and spoke with you um, ourselves and in our partnership with Southern University at Shreveport and the Milam Street Kick. Um, in the last couple of years uh, we have been growing and utilizing technology to expand the way that we deliver uh, small business and startup development services to the community, um, taking a lot of our services online as well as in person, um, nearly tripling in the case of our 30-hour uh, entrepreneurship boot camp that we host with Southern, uh, tripling the capacity, serving almost 100 people with that uh, program over the last year and a half, um, as well as taking our classes and our One Million Cups program that connects uh, local folks who are interested in the community with the small business owner community. Um, we've seen several hum hundred folks come in and uh, learn about those small businesses with us, but also nearly 18,000 viewers uh, tune in and learn about small businesses that are local to Northwest Louisiana uh, through live streams on Facebook, um, expanding our reach and those technology efforts have also expanded the diversity of entrepreneurs which we can reach um, as we work with small businesses. Um, we have also continued our uh, partnerships with Raising Canes and with Lemonade Day. Um, we, I know we've come and we've spoken with you guys in the past about that. Uh, over the last couple of years, as that program has grown, we've reached 490 families, uh, most of which have two or three children participating in the program, uh, helping them to learn about entrepreneurship and also more of the soft skills that we talk so much about. Um, goal setting and they do some budgeting and they learn that business ownership is a pathway for them as well. Um, we have continued our partnership with Junior Achievement 
uh, with the BizCamp program, and we've also forged new, forged new partnerships. Uh, just in November, we have started working on uh, being the host site and the entrepreneurship partner for the Alternative to Detention program. Um, so just some of the ways that we have been working with the youth in our community to help them see entrepreneurship as a pathway and develop those skills uh, that they so need. Um, to serve newer business segments, we have developed some new services that we have not offered in the past. Uh, in the last 18 months, we have opened a digital studio where both our members and members of the community at large can come in. They can record videos, online classes, podcasts. Uh, we've also developed a 3D printing lab or a rapid prototyping lab. Both of those are in use and they have entrepreneurs who are developing innovations, both digital and material, um, and bringing those to market more quickly and keeping them here in Northwest Louisiana for manufacturing. Um, finally, you know, from a, from a perspective of working with businesses in our workspace and through our classes and our roundtables, uh, we have seen significant growth in the small businesses that we work with. Um, the businesses that we've worked with in 2018 and graduated from our programs in 2019 uh, have reported to us the creation of 80 new full-time equivalent jobs. Uh, with the expectation of creating another hundred over the next year or two. Um, and these are jobs that they report to us, uh, pay an annual salary of over $40,000 a year. Uh, they also anticipate a projected increased growth in their uh, uh, gross annual revenue in the tens of millions of dollars. Um, so we are very excited about the direction and the growth that we're seeing both in cohab and in the community in general. Uh, and that is just, like I said, in our workspace side. Uh, we've also seen a lot of growth in our kitchen uh, and in serving culinary entrepreneurs. And I actually have Teresa Lopez here uh, with me to talk a little bit more. She is the manager of our kitchen and the director of the Milam Street Kick uh, to talk a little bit more about those culinary entrepreneurship efforts. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. So, in a, It'll bring it down to me. Okay. In a collaboration with Milam Street Kitchen and Cohab, we've stood up both kitchens. So, as Jessica mentioned, I'm the executive director for Southern University's Milam Street Kitchen Incubator and Community Kitchen. And I spoke with Jessica mm -hmm. last year, so it's been about a year. And I asked her, I said, Will you let me stand up your kitchen? Let's get this going. That way, we can get food businesses inside before the Milam Street Kitchen opens. So during this time, over this last year, we've created um, five businesses. We're able to come inside and work there. It's created more than 20 um, jobs and returning more than $300,000 to the city of Shreveport <coughs> just by um, budding those five small businesses into the Cohab Kitchen. We still have 21 businesses on the waiting list that we will incorporate into Milam Street Kitchen Incubator when they do open. And then when we do open with the MS Kick, we foresee to turn the cohab kitchen into a wholesale kitchen it's almost like a graduation step from retail so if people want to package their products or sell them in stores this will also go along with the choice grant of the distribution center which is um, in the future as well um, that's all I have thank you okay thank you we have um, at least one commission on the board, Jessica. I'm uh, sure this question is going to be for you, Commissioner Doug Dominic. Jessica, can you? I don't think you gave us your last name. Can you give us your last name and just your top job title? There, sure. Uh, my name is Jessica Sheely, and I'm the executive director. At thank you for coming, and thank you for your presentation. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us to come up and talk to you guys today. Vice President Chavez, don't go for it, Jessica. We're not done yet. Yeah. Come, come on back. Jessica, thanks for coming down. I know Coab is doing some amazing things, and I know you've been on the forefront of that uh, with yourself and um, Tess. Uh, the MS Kitchen in collaboration with the Cohab Kitchen, I think, is going to do great things. And, and I've heard about the distribution. I think that's going to be amazing. 
Taylor, I know you're the one that requested this put on the agenda, so thanks for reaching out. Uh, Jessica, I did want to hear a little bit more about that al alternative to the detention. Can you touch on that really quick? I think the public would love to hear that. Absolutely. Well, we have partnered for several years with the School of Greatness uh, to incorporate entrepreneurship training into summer camp and spring break camps. Um, that they have been doing with uh, youth um, through their parish and, and throughout the community. And so they approached us in the summer, late summer, early fall, about serving as a host site um, and helping to incorporate some entrepreneurship and business ownership curriculum into a program uh, that they have just launched in mm -hmm. November. And so they have youth coming in who are going through the program, just as the title suggests, uh, as an alternative to going into, uh, into youth detention. And it teaches them just a broad spectrum of, of skills and conflict resolution. And, and again, those soft skills that we talked about. Uh, and so we are hoping to work with them for a long time in providing not only space, though they do meet uh, in our facility, but also mentors um, who are business owners in the community and also, again, curriculum for showing them entrepreneurship and small business ownership as a potential pathway for them in addition to some of the other job training programs and, and uh, other you know, future building activities that they'll be learning about through the program. I know most of the people that come down here, the organizations and the programs, uh, they always need funding, and, mm -hmm. and that's no surprise to anybody around this horseshoe. But besides the funding, I know we do help Cohab a lot. Um, what can we, the commission, do for you at Cohab to make it what you really want it to be? Well, we are always looking. Uh, the most valuable thing I think that we do as an organization is connecting entrepreneurs and small business owners to the people that they need to know in the community to be as successful as they can be, right, to engineer their success. There is a certain amount of luck that comes with starting a business, but um, knowing the right people and the right pathway to make sure that your business is, for example, legal with codes and legal with licensing. Um, is is important and it can be very difficult and intimidating for new and aspiring business owners uh, and so we're always seeking um, you know mentorship and guidance ways that we can better connect business owners um, to the community to business owners to the municipalities to make that process for them to begin their business the right way the way that we would want them to uh, in the community to make that easier and a, a more transparent process for them and, and we're always looking for new and innovative ways to to help on that front to, to make that an easier process for them. I, I definitely think you hit the nail on the head with that one. It's th that old saying your network is your net worth mm -hmm. um, and I can't speak for everybody around here but I know there's, there's a couple over here that has been extremely <laughs> successful I know maybe Mr. Atkin could have go down there and lend some mentorship on how to make millions, and the, the new budding <laughs> entrepreneurs would love to hear that. Absolutely. Uh, but possibly, Crystal, we could work on doing a, uh, a city effort to bring down entrepreneurs that maybe have never heard of Cohab uh, to push out what they're doing and say if, if the mentors, the business owners, the local business owners that have made it uh, that would love to give back to their community to go back and spend some time with the kids and say, this is, this is what I did, and this is what I messed, what I messed up along the way, so don't do the same. Um, it, That'd be yeah. a good idea. And there are always uh, plenty of opportunities from, you know, young grade schoolers on through our more experienced entrepreneurs where, you know, every small amount of help is just one mistake that they don't have to make themselves on the road to uh, building a successful business. Jessica, thank you for coming down and thank you for what you're doing for our entrepreneurs in the community. Thank Chairman, you. I yield. Thank you. I'm glad that he asked you about that program for alternatives to incarceration. And how can a parent get their child or their youth into that program without uh, being referred by another agency? They reach out through the School of Greatness, mm -hmm. and they have a, an extensive website. You can reach out and find their contact information. They can definitely direct you uh, towards the appropriate contacts for that program. And there's this Bishop Sean Cooper? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Bishop I just wanted to make sure that the public knew exactly, because maybe if you just Google School of Greatness, you may get a lot of them. So just wanted to make sure they know who to contact. Absolutely. And how many other organizations is COHAB partnered with to allocate funding? or provide grants? Uh, we partner with a lot of organizations. Um, 
Our goal is really to avoid any overlap of services where at all possible. So we work very hard. Um, you know, our, our principal partnership in providing business education, like I said, is with Southern University and uh, so both for our entrepreneurship training and also through the kitchen. Um, but we have numerous partners. We like to partner with the universities as far as Louisiana Tech to reach out to both the innovation students and the MBA students, business students, uh, to connect with them. We work extensively with the Small Business Development Center. We're hosting their fall classes. Um, uh, we, we are a good location for a lot of things like that because we are centrally located right here um, and we have a large facility um, but we work with LED extensively uh, offering the roundtables that we do particularly our CEO roundtable uh, with Louisiana Economic Development um, and like I said particularly for our youth programs we love to partner with uh, organizations that are doing uh, really good work through strong youth programs and help kind of further their reach out into the community. So we are increasing the impact of those strong existing programs as opposed to creating new redundant programs. That's great. Thank you. Um, thank you for what you're doing in the community so um, by partnering. We believe in public-private partnerships. Teresa mentioned something about when MS Kick becomes um, open for a lot the waiting list um, mm -hmm. a lot of people who are trying to get in there want to know more about culinary do you have a specific day estimated when it will actually open so um, I'll kind of just give you like a back brief of why it did not open after the grand opening we had um, additional equipment that was needed. Um, when it was originally drawn out, it was drawn out almost like a home kitchen, even though it was commercial kitchen eyes. Um, so we went back in and we were like, okay, well, this isn't gonna allow the tenant to be able to cook a lot of production at one time in just one oven. So we need double stack ovens. So it was just my advice that we just go ahead, we put a halt on it for now, get the right equipment in there. Um, that way when we do open, they have what they need. Um, we had to go through different processes, of course, with the plumbing hookup, the electrical hookup. So it wasn't as easy as just getting the equipment in and then we're good to go. Yes. Um, so one thing had to wait for the other. Um, so we do have our electrical done. Um, our plumbing is all done. Um, we didn't have to have the plumbers come back out because there was a, a gas regulator that wasn't installed. Um, but other than that, all we have left is the fire marshal and public health approval. Um, I've already created a great relationship with the public health department, so I know we're going to be good there. Okay. Um, and the fire marshal is from the state of Louisiana that has to come down and inspect, so I don't think we'll have any troubles there. So we're hoping within the next couple of weeks we'll be open. Great. Thank yes. you so much. We have a couple other commissioners on board. Commissioner Lynn Carthorne. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Uh, it's good to see uh, Cohead moving on, on down the road. I've been a champion of the organization for a long time, even in the days when Mr. John Grinley was there. And I uh, just want to encourage you guys to keep doing what you're doing. You guys serve a, a particular niche as it relates to the, in the entrepreneurial cycle here in the mm -hmm. city of Shreveport. And then secondly, I want to also publicly mention that, uh, and this is for the, for the edification of our fellow commissioners, that we also support men in Cattle Parish the School of Greatness. I've been a champion of the organization for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we often have conversations about groups that we fund, them having some kind of collaborative effort, effort together. So in those committee meetings. So it's good to know that even without our guidance and nudging that you guys have already uh, connected and doing some great things together. So we're going to continue to be supportive of what you guys are doing at the School of Greatness. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Chairman. Commissioner. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Jessica, and I kind of listened in on the presentation as I was driving in. Uh, great work. I uh, appreciate uh, what y'all do. I want to encourage uh, you and the team and the coalition um, uh, to make sure that you have a relationship uh, with your parish commissioner. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm proud to represent the downtown area, the MS Kick area. Uh, not aware of some of these conversations that I hear now. And as I explained to Dr. Wilson, as we talked about the cattle comment part, uh, I prefer to be on the front end of information and not the back end. Um, I like to know about it and not find out about it. So uh, I would encourage y'all to let's reach out, let's have a conversation, um, because all politics are local. And so 
uh, let's make sure that we have our conversations ahead of time so that uh, I believe, and as I tell my organizations, uh, I like to know that they have an advocate down here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason why, if there's a need, that your commissioner doesn't know mm -hmm. about it. Um, so uh, I'm available by phone, I'm available by text, I'm available by email, social media, or just in passing uh, so that we can know what's going on and what those needs are. And so there's no excuse for us not to uh, be in contact or to not know what's going on. Uh, I'm also in touch with Bonnie Moore with regard to the MS kit, uh, but just know that um, we have to have a constant flow of communication, and I'm all about that uh, with regard to organizations because I'm the one that takes the hit for having all the money in my district. So uh, I at least need to be uh, informed uh, about what's going on, what you need, what are those needs. I think the question was asked, how can the parish help? Uh, but the first way that I want to encourage you to get the parish involved is to uh, work with your parish commissioner mm -hmm. that represents the district that you're trying to serve. So uh, I appreciate what you're doing. I think it's an exciting time for downtown Shreveport Absolutely. and Cattle Parish as we try to get back investing in our inner core uh, and in our inner hub. And so uh, we have to make sure that um, we're about uh, making those development, uh, uh, basically placemaking ideas that we're doing in incremental uh, development, not trying to take on big, large-scale projects. And I think that's what y'all have committed yourself to doing. And so uh, I want to see that continue to happen, continue to grow. Um, but want to make sure that we're doing it in, in decent and in order. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I want to say that I've always been an advocate of uh, COHAB, uh, even when we had uh, EAP that was um, asking for funding and stuff. Um, I always felt that COHAB should have gotten more money than EAP because they're doing all of the, the real work, I would say. They're working with those entrepreneurs to making sure that they can get their ideal onto paper and then onto uh, the next level. And that, to me, takes a lot more work than to be on the backside to say that you have a finished product, which then goes to some <coughs> angels, and then the angels give them the money. But the real work was actually done with Cohab, and I knew Cohab worked with a lot of those entrepreneurs to get them back into the EAP program so that they could actually get funded. Uh, so I applaud you for all the hard work you do, and that um, it hadn't been taken, you know, not <coughs> unlikely. We have been looking at that, at least I have, uh, for years, and I always have questioned the amount of money we gave EAP as opposed to Cohab. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Linda B. Johnson. I think that's all the commissioners that have any comments. Um, thank you so much Excuse again, me. Jessica, for Absolutely. coming down. And thank you all for everything that you're doing to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Cattle Parish. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having Great. us today. <coughs> Next, we move to reports, administrative report. Good afternoon, Good President Gage Watts Good commissioners. Afternoon. Commissioner Watts, uh, just want to reiterate for the public, in case they have heard of this yet, but uh, on November the 13th, 2019, Jerrica Bryant, and Haley Barnett, and Stephanie Rico and I participated <coughs> in the Standard Poor's bond presentation in conjunction with our $10 million <coughs> bond issue this month. During the presentation, Standard Poor's reviewed the organizational financial standings, the local uh, economy, and also they inquired about the management of the organization. On the evening of November the 21st, Standard & Poor's contacted us and advised us that the organization was being reaffirmed once again for a AAA bond rating status. With the most recent AAA bond rating reaffirmation, it marks yet another historical accomplishment for the parish and your organization having earned and maintained this particular status for nine years. Uh, I want to extend my sincere uh, uh, thanks and appreciation to you all for allowing the, the administration to accomplish the parish's capital projects program through the issuance of revenue bonds, and which will provide the necessary funds to support essential projects for the next several years. So congratulations to the entire Team Cato. All right. Well, the next item, Commissioner President Watts, I have uh, the Toys for Tots. Don't, uh, the well, program will be Thursday morning at 7 a.m. here in the foyer out front. 
And certainly we uh, would uh, appreciate any donations whatsoever towards that uh, end. And you know, we, we try to get as much toys as we can to provide for kids who will not be able to afford them. So we'll, we would accept any <coughs> toys, whatever you want to give to that end. And we are partnering with the Marine Corps uh, Reserve Unit to, to do the Toys for Toss program here in the foyer on Thursday morning. At 7 a.m.? At 7 a.m. Okay. The media will be here about 8. Okay. 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 Is that Moffitt? Yeah. I'm sorry. At Moffitt Mazda. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, out on um, Upper Bird Coons, Moffitt Mazda. At 7 a.m. Okay, also the next item we have the grand opening of the Blanch the Blanchard Compactor site is scheduled for December 13th at 1 o'clock. This is our 19th uh, uh, compactor site opening. It's, it's currently open right now, but we want to celebrate the achievement of opening yet another site for the citizens to dispose of their household waste. So that will be on the 13th at, at 1 o'clock at the site. Uh, this coming uh, December 10th will mark 35 years of the parish of Caddo. <coughs> The Cattle Parish Commission as an organization the, uh, uh, under the Commission Form of Government. And uh, we all have a little punch and cake this Thursday to celebrate that occasion. And that will take place on December 10th, but we'll celebrate it this week since we will be meeting next week. Also, uh, Director Pat Wesley is here to kind of, he's revamping the entire program <coughs> over at the Parks and Recreation. And I asked him to give us an update today on one element of, the, of his update which is the, the, uh, the gardening program. So Patrick, you going to come forward? Dr. Wilson, while he's coming, the yes, celebration sir. on Thursday will begin at what time with the cake and punch? Um, I think uh, I, I would suggest we do perhaps an hour before the regular scheduled meeting. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. You want to have some meat and bread to go with the cake and punch? Pardon me? He's going to have some sandwiches to go with the cake and punch. <laughs> we, 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 we thought we'd be conservative, keep a cake and punch. Oh, okay. If you need something, I can bring you one. Um, Mr. President, when is that? It's an hour before um, yes. the commission meeting on Thursday. 2.30. Yes, yes, this, this okay. Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Wesley, if you give us an update on, on the gardening program, please. Yes. We'll be headed with that. Good, good afternoon, Commissioner. Good afternoon. Hope everybody had a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday. <coughs> Um, the Kettle Parish uh, Parks and Recreation Garden Program began in 2018 with a uh, program initiatives designed to introduce uh, gardening programs and activities to youth and adults. Um, over the past, well, since the inception of the program, uh, we've opened garden program activities and garden sites at uh, four elementary schools. Uh, at Atkins, Santa Park Elementary, Cher Cherokee Park, and Claiborne uh, Elementary uh, Schools. Uh, we've also had uh, community garden programs and activities uh, located at just some green spaces throughout the Cattle Parish uh, um, Park sites, as well as far, as well as uh, uh, other schools and, and high schools and, and uh, the SPAR facilities. Um, as we uh, move towards 2020, um, we will be meeting with uh, the Shreveport Green mm -hmm. and, uh, and the LSU Ag staff to see how we can sustain uh, our garden programs as we move forward in 2020. Um, our recreational program uh, footprint will expand all of our programs and uh, most of y'all may know uh, Senerica Smith, our program coordinator, uh, she'll have some additional uh, program coordinating duties as we expand our program. So we'll be meeting with LSU Ag and as well as uh, Shreveport Green to see how we can, they can help us sustain some of those existing programs that we have to date. Mm -hmm. So um, out of the four or five programs, the garden sites that we have, uh, I think about 15, 1800 people, youth and adults have participated in those programs and uh, our community gardens are good for our community. Uh, um, the Healthy Eating Initiative is, is out front um, with our wellness initiative, and um, uh, hopefully we can sustain those programs and keep moving forward. Mr. Wesley, could, can you elaborate when you say sustain the programs, exactly what you're saying? Well, when I talk about sustain, we want to make sure that 
going into 2020, we're, we're going to be e increasing our programming efforts. There, there are going to be four pillars that we're going to be programming, uh, that our recreation department will be programming from. We'll have a conservation and nature pillar that we'll be programming, which our community garden will be under that, under that pillar. We'll have a recreation and wellness pillar that we'll be programming. Uh, we'll have an athletic pillar we'll be programming and we'll have an educational after school component that we'll be programming on. So we'll be expanding our programs with the same staff that we have. So the gardening program, the person that's doing the program will not be able to do that program 24 seven. That person's roles and responsibilities will be expanding to assist us with some of the programs that we're gonna be introducing, new programs that we'll be introducing. So the representative that did that program will have some additional, a lot more additional programming responsibilities that, that she had. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be meeting with the LSU Ag and the Shreveport Green to see how we can make sure that these existing programs, community garden programs that we have are sustainable and so we can keep them ongoing. So when you're saying sustainable, you're talking about adding um, more manpower or funding? Yeah. Well, trying to keep the existing programs that we have to date on going into 2000, 2020. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about sustainability, we're talking about just keeping the same programs that we have to date okay. on going. Thank you. Yes. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yes, uh, I think I'm going to probably try to elaborate on what uh, uh, Commissioner Gage Watch was saying. Uh, when you say sustainability, or is there is there a financial issue? Is there some financial restraints? I'm just trying to get to uh, when we say sustainability, are we having issues with regard to funding, or are we having issues with regard to human capital, human needs, those type of things? I think that might be where we're trying to find out is are there some are there some limitations there, or it's always limitation in terms of resources. Right. Okay, the parks is the lowest budget in all the parish government. And we have enough to sustain the current level of employees we have there. And by what Patrick is saying, we want to continue to, uh, to offer the community maximum amount of coverage with the same amount of resources. Mm -hmm. So yes, we are limited by resources, but we work, we, work, we work within those limits that we have. But we just can't be all focused on one or nothing without at the cost of sacrifice or something else. And my approach and what we're facilitating is that we balance it across an array of programs for the community and not just total focus on one area. So so the addition of the addition of uh, Shreveport Green and Ag Center is to help beef up maybe the some manpower. of the manpower right. there. Yeah, for, for example right. so that Right. For example, you know, we uh, partner with Shreveport Green. Mm -hmm. Last year, in addition to the manpower we expended, they are in the parks and recreation yes, budget, correct? Yes, sir. And, and the majority of that money was spent on gardening. So, do we do we are we peeling pair pairing that back? No, or? sir. Okay. Same level. We, we we had to rely on more than That's what some you, some external resources to make that work. So I, I guess my question is that is that what you is that what you wanted to do, or did you mm -hmm. want it to do something else? The funding that we have in there for Shreveport Green. Well, we gonna stay with the current level funding as we work towards balancing it all across all the programs that we have. But do you want them to do community gardens or something else? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, they're currently doing that for okay. us already. I am. Uh, we'll we'll I, be we'll be excuse me we'll be no, meeting with them to try to see how that we can maximize sure. the partnership. Sure. I don't think right now we're maximizing the partnership, mm -hmm. and then once we figure out where we are, then we sure. can go from there. Okay. I. Uh, mm -hmm. I dropped the ball because I was supposed to send y'all that grant from Louisiana Healthcare Connection and I forgot. Mm -hmm. I'm sending that to you now okay. um, as we stand here. They had a grant out to help with some community garden, food scarcity type mm -hmm. things. So if we could look into, mm -hmm. I think they do it twice a year, one in the, one in sort of the spring and then one t coming into like the fall. So if we all could want to, just want to start getting a heads up as you talk to Shreveport Green on that one. Um, the other question, unrelated to the community okay. gardens, mm -hmm. uh, the mayor of Stony Hill called me, uh, Ms. Mm -hmm. Bessie Smith, yes, sir. and mentioned about the parks equipment. Have we? Yes, sir, we have. We took care of that. She said that she hadn't seen anything. We, we responded a month ago. Okay. She mm -hmm. said she hadn't seen any equipment or anything, so if we could, 
I just follow we up. We did her. several repairs and landscaping out there, but I can re-engage again to see what's missing. Okay, I thought, I thought they talked about some equip, new equipment or new playground equipment or something like that. Um, yes, I hate to add that to the wrong. community garden list, but I would. Yes, kind of so that I won't have to say it's not germane. <laughs> yeah, because last time you and I met with Miss the mayor of Stone Hill. Well, I don't know if this was on community garden. This was just parks and recreation. Yes, park I think it's a, appropriate Yes, spot it is, but I think that we were on community gardens right now. You are correct. Well, he was talking about changes just in parks and recreation in yes, general, sir. right? Yes, sir. Well okay. checked, Commissioner. Yeah. The last time you and I met with the mayor, okay. we addressed her issue that following week. Okay. So if there's something else I need to look at, we'll okay. go. Okay, and, yes, I, and this was prior to Patrick. Yes, that's coming, correct. Mr. That's Wesley correct. coming on, so yes, sir. Uh, if we could update him on that and, right. and will. Uh, engage Ms. Smith on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Wesley, there's another commissioner on board. Are all of the schools still operating their community gardens? Uh, yes, to date they are. Okay, thank you. You're right. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, ma'am. Um, one, have we scheduled a new date for the MLK Community Garden grand opening? It will be early spring. There's no official date now, but it will be early spring. Um, we are getting together our 2020 calendar events, which is due here in the next two, three weeks. So uh, hopefully we'll have an official, official date from my coordinator for the next two, three weeks. Okay, and just let me know about that. Um, I think the last date we had some people show up because uh, they didn't get the, the memo that it had been postponed because of the potential weather that was coming in. Right. Um, the four pillars, can you elaborate any on those, especially the ones uh, dealing with uh, athletics and the recreation wellness? Uh, well, we'll just, we'll, our recreation and wellness, we'll be partnering uh, with Boys and Girls Clubs, area health agencies, and doing a series of health and wellness initiatives uh, throughout the calendar year. I think we'll, I was going to explain once we were still in the planning process. Okay. Okay. So as we lay out our 2020 calendar of events, I, I can expand on a little bit more, but we still got some memorandum of understandings being processed and things of that nature. So okay. Some things are not official yet, but. But those are our four pillars that we'll be programming. All of our programs will be coming under. And uh, um, it'll be a diverse slate of activities, something new, something unique and diverse that we haven't had before, but we'll be laying out uh, that better serve the citizens of County Parish. Okay. Um, I think one of the, the main issues with the community gardens is that um, we see a lot of interest in the community behind those. and. Um, I think, as I can allude to Ms. Uh, Stormy Gage Watts, is probably want a community garden in her area. And I think Commissioner Jackson gonna want one in his area. Oh, I have one. Oh, you got one? I got one. Okay. And so there might be some other commissioners come on next term that want a community garden as well. So it's not like, it's something that we see as an interest. Um, the other piece of it is that I wanted to make sure that we get this in line for NACO so that it could be presented as a, a project that we're doing in Cattle Parish mm -hmm. that we might be able to get an award behind it as well because it falls under the Healthy community, uh, Counties mm -hmm. um, program mm -hmm. and we are a member of that. And so uh, this also with Community Gardens, um, the company I work for, we also partner with a neighborhood to do a community garden and it has brought that whole street together the, the neighborhood in that area, they come together because it's a meeting point for them. They go, they plant the, the vegetables, they go pick the vegetables. Uh, we just put a little walking track inside of the community garden so now they can go um, walk. Um, there is a child with autism. Now they, they're able to let that child go into the garden and mm -hmm. not leave out of the garden area. Uh, so there's a lot of pluses behind community gardens. So it's something that I would like to see going. I've uh, been dealing with the one that's in the Moortown area for the last, uh, I'm going to say about eight, eight years. Mm -hmm. So I, I know what they can have the potential to do. So mm -hmm. um, it is something that I have a big passion for. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and just hope that you know we can get it going right and mm -hmm. get the MLK involved in one as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there are studies out that show that those also help out on what I had been talking about earlier in the year about how we can kind of cut crime. Well, that's a meeting point for all the neighbors. They go there, they find out who each other is, and basically now they talk, they watch each other, and basically now they, if they see some suspicious activity, they call and to let somebody know about it. Instead of just sitting in the house where I don't know who that is, it's just a, a good meeting point and a social point where they can go and network with each other and without costing anything. And now they got some, a meal that, that comes out of it. So it, like, it won't be like something that would just be rotting in the ground. People will go out there and actually pick the, the, the vegetables mm -hmm. and also the, the fruits from the fruit trees that mm -hmm. uh, the that's, new commission that's coming. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that's coming, sir. Yeah, the new fruit trees. And every far. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it has a lot of positive impact, especially on those communities like that, that somebody could actually go in and they get to know the neighbors and, and try to yeah. say that we're doing something <coughs> that, that could crime, and, and there's are already studies out there to show that community guards do do that. That's all I have. That's it. And I just wanted to add to that, Commissioner Johnson, it also helps to improve mental health uh, with relaxation oh, through yeah. that. So that's a huge problem that needs to be addressed in our communities as well. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we do. We are very interested in um, the economic impact, um, providing food for those, too, who otherwise may eat out of a trash can. So community gardens are moving across the nation, and we want to continue um, to be proactive in this stance. Commissioner John Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Wesley, after listening to some of our, our colleagues, it just <clears throat> dawns on me that that there are some views around the table, which I think are representative of the people that, that the commissioners represent. So as you develop your plan, as you get to a rough draft, a preliminary draft, I would, I would encourage you to just run it by uh, your commissioners to get their input because we want to ensure that your resources are allocated to areas that people are interested in and where people think they, they would get the most bang for the buck or the most mm -hmm. the most good out of your out of our investment mm -hmm. so i encourage you not to, not to develop your plan in a in a vacuum but you know populate your draft across everybody and let's get some input i'm not trying to mm -hmm. to make your world overly political but i do think we want to at least get some input and ensure that resources are going <laughs> in the direction where people would like to see them go thank you thank, thank you. you madam president thank you commissioner Commissioner Lynn Carthorn. Yes, I just want to follow up with uh, Commissioner Johnson, Commissioner Jackson, with the uh, Green Book Park that's in my district. Between uh, our previous director, there were some proposed uh, improvements being made, and obviously, I don't know if that's gotten to your desk, but I want to follow up with you this week yes, as it relates to those improvements and uh, maybe the discussion of a garden in that district also. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Pass the green. Pass the green. Seven months ago. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wesley. Okay, Mr. Gaze, watch. I have one more thing. Yes. Just, let me say this way. Move on. We are proponent of gardening. We're not anti-gardening on the administration side of the house. We have to do things that's sustainable, mm -hmm. and we want to be able to teach people how to garden without yes. going and cultivating everybody's garden throughout the entire community because we don't have the resources to do it. I understand that. So, so we so we believe in it. We support it wholeheartedly. So I don't want anybody to walk out here saying we, we don't believe in that. That's not the case. Okay. All right. I don't uh, know if we um, accepted that thought or not, but thank you for making that clear yes, that you do know that that's important to us and to the citizens of Gatto Parish. Oh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. It's important to my perspective as well. The thank healthy you. people mean better, better economy, better parish, cattle, so total nine yards. Uh, the last thing is the, you should have your, your, your monthly financial report for November at your station. Just make sure you're aware of that. Yes. And, and that concludes my report for the day. And I do appreciate anybody coming out to Thursday morning at Moffitt to help with Taj and talk. We appreciate seeing you out here if you can make it. It's 7 a.m. to what time? 7 o'clock Thursday morning. No, until what time? Eight. Seven. Oh, actually, it lasts about two hours. Two hours, okay. Yeah, so you don't have to stay the entire time. You can come in. Eight or seven? Yeah, you had, you had the media will be there at eight o'clock. Eight a.m. Okay. But you don't have to stay the entire time if you want to. Okay. That's it. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Next, next, we move to commission remarks, communication reports, and other items related to the work session agenda. 
I see no one on the board. Commissioner Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to reiterate uh, your compliment of the finance department and the whole organization for the AAA bond rating. Yes, I think that people don't realize just how significant that is and how how rare it is in the municipal space to have a AAA bond rating. So I congratulate Haley mm -hmm. and Erica on their on their good work there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to comment on an earlier statement <coughs> regarding um, cohab and. EAP and and other economic development entities that are in our community you know I, I think it's important that we recognize that economic development is a ecosystem it requires uh, multiple players uh, you can't just pick one and go with one or another so I think it's it is uh, important that we support uh, a number of different players in that space so that they can they can work with each other and, and feed off each other and hopefully lift the whole community up in my view, you know, you've got guys like the startup prize that really gets gets pulls people kind of out of the woodwork to develop their start developing their their thoughts and helps them get to like state you know the first uh, step in that process and then things like uh, cohab and EAP come in and, and help them get uh, further down the path. So I just I just want to want to emphasize that it's a team sport and uh, not not just a single player game. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, sir. Next item, Mr. Clark. Oh, I'm Fred? sorry. Hold on. I see Commissioner Stephen Jackson on the board. Uh, yes, um, uh, Dr. Wilson. I'm also going to send you the uh, the Northwest Louisiana Master Gardeners. I uh, wasn't. I don't have. I don't. For some reason, I don't have uh, uh, Mr. Wesley's email there in the program here. But if you could, Wesley Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's make sure we get on top of those and I'm always uh, for I'm always a proponent of let's um, yeah, so we've, had, we've got several grants in the past okay and we always seek out grants okay and local partners <coughs> and, and Home Depot okay they supply the stuff too right so, right. Yeah, so we, we do that whenever we can okay so yeah and if we start I know some of them may not come open until like the spring with gardening right. the springtime right. is when they come open but if right. I think the sooner we start the better uh, <coughs> get a draft let people look over them critique them uh, there he is and um, and so so yeah let's let's move those on and then also let's follow up mrs. Bessie the one about Green Book the one about Greenbrook was the one that uh, 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 Councilman, Councilman Green, Green. We had mentioned it. yeah, we, we responded that we, as well. yeah we were at the uh, med school uh, right. deal uh, right. for that one um, the other thing been taken care of though, no, that's been going on six months seven oh. months now. Hmm? but anyway the, the yeah. Green Brook has been going on a while yeah we'll get it straight Right. Okay, I think they well, mentioned it to the previous director. Yeah. So yeah. But I, I know when we were at uh, Commissioner Carthon, we were over at the med school. Pastor Green pulled us right, right. aside. Um, and then I'll uh, ask for uh, animal services to come up uh, a little bit later uh, to address some things there. But that's it for me on the uh, agenda piece. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. You're welcome, sir. Mr. Clark. Uh, President's report. All right. I just have. Um, couple quick things to remind everyone about the budget uh, adoption tomorrow at 3.30. And on Thursday at 12.30, the Juvenile Justice Committee will have our meeting and lunch will be provided. Uh, December 8th, Sister Sharon a season from 2 to 6 at the Hilton Garden Inn. For more info, contact Felicia Williams at My Spot My Way. That's it for me. Um, the juvenile Thursday at 12.30 at Juvenile? Here. Was here? Yes. And then it's Here at 30 in the bay. Yes. And lunch will be provided. So committee members, if you would, RSVP to Todd so we can know how many to prepare for. We need no sadly. That's it for me, Mr. Clerk. Okay. We have no old business to move to new business. Authorized introduction of ordinance number 5939 of 2019 to amend volume two of the Code of Ordinances of the Parish of Caddo. As amended, the Parish, the Caddo Move Parish Unit. Second. Unit. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. That was second by Vice President Chavez. I think Commissioner Jackson beat me to the punch. Speak, I was speaking low. Okay, speak up, sir. Okay, that was second by Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, would you like to speak on your motion? Okay, see no discussion, please vote. Mr. 
Dragons. Go through. Thanks, sir. Thank okay, you. and that passes 10-0. And I just like to recognize that same Mr. Scott Martinez, NLDP, and Ashley Basada here. Thank y'all for joining us today. Mm. All right. Next, we move to authorize introduction of ordinance number 5940-2019. Authorize the parish administrator to execute a termination of the right of first refusal on lot one, North Freeport Industrial Park, unit number two, being a re subdivision of lots nine and 10, North Freeport Industrial Park, unit number one. Move to advance. Second. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Linda B. Johnson, second by Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Commissioner Linda B. Johnson, you yeah, to speak? Yes, I just would like some more information behind this. Some more information behind this particular um, ordinance. Okay. You want to announce it? Yeah, that'd be fine. Robert, you want to? Yeah, no, but you ain't know. Oh, <clears throat> this popped on. I didn't do like you. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't get a question. Last report, I would like to some more information about this particular ordinance. Uh, it's uh, when we sold originally sold the uh, lot to, <coughs> excuse me, high capacity coil. Uh, we left a basically a clawback proposal where if they sold the property, they had to offer it to us first. <coughs> Since that time, the company has merged with, under a different name, but they're getting ready to sell the property to another a, a national company that's I think in a. a equipment rental business and so they're asking to for us to terminate that agreement so they can sell the property so we basically have a first refusal if correct we to buy it. that's correct okay all right it, i mean i just didn't know about it until i saw it on the agenda that's all that's it commissioner johnson that's all all right Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought this was one. I thought I heard. I thought I was a part of some conversation where we were talking about either partnering or taking over North Streetport Industrial Park. That's not yeah, what this is. It, that's, that's another discussion, but similar in nature. Okay. Just, Just different. Okay. Different All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. I see no further discussion. Please vote. That passes 10 0. Authorize resolution number 95 of 2019. Authorize cattle pressure administrator request and authorize Louisiana State Mineral and Energy Board and the by the chair. Second. Okay, it was moved by the chair and second by Commissioner Dominic. See no discussion? Please vote. Okay, that passes 10 0. Next item. Authorized resolution number 96, 2019, giving rent to public notice of the regular scheduled meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Doug Dominic, second by Vice President Chavez. Commissioner Dominic, you need to speak? No, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Jackson. Um, I'd like to make an amendment uh, to add uh, or to amend the uh, meeting times to take place at 4.30 uh, for 3.30 for work session and 4.30 for regular session. I can get a second. Second. Okay, Commissioner Jackson, would you like to speak on your substitute motion? Uh, yes, I, I just would like to uh, make our meeting uh, times a little bit more accessible, a little bit more open, I think, for the parish commission. Um, I've had this discussion for four years now, and, um, you know, it's an opportunity for us to try to make our meeting times more accessible uh, and convenient for the general public to come down, participate, uh, and be a part of our uh, commission process. Uh, we often talk about people getting uh, wrong information or false information, but until we, I think we've met, I think we've done a great job with regard to doing Facebook Live. Uh, we have it on YouTube, we have it on live stream. Uh, but there are some people who would like to come down and sit into our meetings. And so I think if we uh, make some minor adjustments uh, uh, basically an hour delay in our start time, uh, it will give us an opportunity to engage the public a little bit more. Uh, and it may be a little bit better on some of our, the folks who uh, work around the horseshoe uh, schedules as well. So uh, we don't have a lot. We're not here three and four hours. Uh, some of our meetings do run over, but I think we typically budget uh, in anticipation for that. Uh, the vast majority of the individuals here are salaried there may be one or two that are on a um, that are on a um, hourly wage, like uh, I think the deputy clerk as well as the deputies 
uh, outside that provide security. Um, but other than that, I think we already budget for or anticipate that because we don't know how long our meters may run anyhow. So we anticipate that over it. So I think uh, starting our work sessions at 3.30 and then starting our uh, regular sessions at 4.30 is just one more step toward uh, being a more open and accessible uh, body uh, here in Cattle Parish. And so I hope we will advance this uh, for 2020 and with the start of a new commission body as well. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, well, I was going to actually basically was there a calendar uh, attached to this? That was my initial question before the um, amendment piece came to it. No calendar to this? There's a calendar, but I did not attach it to attach it Thursday. <coughs> okay. All right. Um, the 430 time, uh, I mean, to me, the 330 is fine. If people are interested, we'll have the chamber full depending on the subject. Um, if the subject is not what they want to hear, they're not coming down here. We can meet at 6 o'clock. We can meet on a Saturday. If, they, if it's not what they want to hear, they're not coming. Uh, so I don't think changing the time is going to bring additional people down on a regular basis. It just based on if it's something that interests them or something that they want to uh, to hear or discuss or to give their feedback, whether it's positive or negative, <coughs> uh, they will they will be here if, if it's something of interest. So I don't think that the change of time is really um, that important. But I mean, it's going to create some overage and expenditures of staff. Um, so I, that's that's up to you. I'll be both no on the changing the time okay uh mr uh, hopkins to change our times it would have to be a bylaw change if you look under article one of our bylaws it states that the th uh, first and third tuesday and after the first following the first and third tuesday each month at 3 30 p.m okay our meeting so it, it would require this this is made this resolution is made off our bylaws so to do that, we'd have to also make a change to the bylaws. That's fine. Okay. So, so their motion is null and void. Commissioner, he can make, um, you all can make a change to this, but you need to be, it will not be affected unless you go back and change your bylaws. Okay. So the You're gonna have the to motion vote. can stand uh -huh. as, okay. All right. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson, was that it for you? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Jackson, I need you to get back on the board since you've already spoken. Yeah. Oh. Commissioner Doug Dominic. Yeah. Um, I don't know. How you I had Todd answered one of my questions, but um, this, you know, I figured it didn't have to be by bylaws or ordinance. Um, I guess the big issue is we, 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 we talked about this every year, every year, every year. We've always had a, the meetings at 3.30. I'm okay with 3.30. I think that's the best time. I think Commissioner Linda Johnson brings up a great <coughs> point that it, people are going to be here they're going to be here uh, if you have something at 3 30 and they're interested they're going to be here if you have something at six o'clock they're interested they're going to be here it's, that's just how it is um, but i think the biggest issue that we're looking at is we're fixing to have a turnover i think we're fixing to have six new commissioners on board if our counting is right i think that i'd hate to set a time when these people had ran for office thinking that they were going to meet at 3 30. Uh, I think that this is something that if you uh, want to decide, y'all need to wait until the new commissioner body get here, gets here and they decide that they want to change, then y'all need to change it at that point. I'm not going to be here anymore because I'm term limited out. So it's not that big a deal for me, but I just simply think if y'all really want to do this, y'all need to give the new commissioners because, you know, you got Mike going out, I'm going out, I'm Jim going Smith's out. going out, Matthew's going out. Um, it's going to be a change. Uh, Gerald so I think we need to listen to whoever takes their spot that's just my point so I'll be voting no Commissioner Jackson amendment I would ask that we stick with the, the first motion thank you Commissioner Dominic Commissioner Lewis Johnson um, thank you Madam President um, I share um, Commissioner Dominic's position on that but I'll be just after I hit the uh, request to speak I think Commissioner Jackson 
might have addressed the concern, and that was simply how it affects the uh, employees, uh, the other members of the parish to have to attend the meetings, uh, their time, and that type of thing was a consideration as well. So, but I, I was um, at the same position based on that. But those are the two considerations uh, that I would ask that we would consider. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Commissioner Matthew Lynn. I think voting yes on this opens the door and it balances the scale and the new body could vote it down easily as they could vote to change the bylaws to include it. And not just considering the people that come to the meetings to watch the meetings if they have something that they want to address, but it opens up the commission body itself to a larger group of people that otherwise would no longer would not be able to be elected. A lot of us here are able to write our own schedules. And there's a lot of people that are ready for office and prepared to be in, in office that could abstain from taking their lunch break on a Thursday to be here on to be here, you know, an hour early to make it. And then at the same time, they, of course, they would still have to negotiate their, their Monday time as well. But it's that much closer to making being elected in this position accessible to a greater quantity of people in Caddo Parish. And I think that, that government and policy and policy making should be accessible to everyone. And I think moving to a later time allows that and as far as the millions of dollars that we spend the the pocket change that would go to overtime for the few people is not even worth considering thank you that's all madam president thank you sir commissioner Lynn Carthorne. thank you madam president i think a couple of my concerns were addressed by commissioner dominique and uh lyndon johnson but i also want to express to uh commissioner jackson his exuberance and in, in, on a day on an annual basis bringing up this <laughs> issue i I, I, I do agree with right, making government more accessible to people in this local community. But we have put some mechanisms in place like the Facebook Live and we are also on television. Do we have a mechanism by which we can see how many people are viewing the Facebook Live on mm -hmm. a regular basis yes. and, and what kind of uh, increase we've gotten, in, whether it be the television program or Facebook Live. So that gives us an indication of the interest before we move to this step right here. You follow the Commissioner Jackson? Absolutely. So let's see. Then once again, we can take a look at the empirical data to see whether or not there's an interest out there that's what we need to do. Th oh, thanks, Madam President. <coughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Mike Middleton. Well, it may not be necessary, but I'm going to call for the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> question has been called. Uh, there's no one else on the board. Please vote. Call for the question? Yes. I'm calling for the question. The question has been called. It passes 10 1. <coughs> now we are voting on Mr. Clark. The substitute motion. Which is? Amendment. Amendment. <coughs> Amendment. The amend, right. The amend. substitute motion to amend to change the time Monday to? Keep the time at 3 30. 3 30 and works in regular session at 4 30 on Thursdays. Okay. That's, that's the motion. Right. Thank you for reading it. Todd, vote. this has to be adopted by a certain time, right? To answer we, Doug's point, we have to do it sometimes after the first week. We usually try to do it right before the end of the year, but we've got January if we need to hold this over. Oh, okay. So. Okay, please vote. <laughs> okay, and that fails. <laughs> Next item, please, sir. Well, that, that's original. On the, I'm sorry. Um, on the original motion. I'm moving fast. What was the original motion? The original motion to vote on the resolution as it right. states. To give written public notice of the scheduled, regular scheduled meetings at Paddle Parish for the year 2020. A motion. We already made it. I mean, I made it most of the time to vote. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Smith, you need Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Okay, and that passes 10 1. Mr. Smith, huh? did you mean to vote no? 
I hit the wrong one, I'm sorry. Okay. Let the record reflect that pass is 11 to zero. Thank you. All right, next we move to authorize resolution number 97, amending and reenacting resolution 12 of 2018, approving Inferno for participation in the industrial tax exemption program. To move for adoption. Second. Second. Oh, introduction, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right, that was moved by Commissioner Stephen Jackson. That was second by Commissioner John Atkins. Commissioner Jackson, are you on the board? Uh, yeah, this is in my district because somebody, it, are we, has, did something go wrong? Did something go right? Mm -hmm. what, what we got to do? You know, what? If you'll allow me, I'll um, Thank you, Scott. make some explanations. What happened is this is one of the first ITEPs that was done after Governor Edwards did the executive order uh, back in 2017. Uh, this was probably one of the first five that was approved in the state of Louisiana, and it was really kind of cumbersome with the rules back then. What happened is at the state level, they <laughs> passed and it, their ITEL for two machines at that value was $1.1 million. At the commission and the city level, they did it at $480,000 for one machine. So that was the discrepancy. The, initially, it should have been done for their two machines rather than just one. At the state level, it was approved for two machines at the local level it was for one. So this company, just to refresh your memory, they've been here since 1922. It's a family owned business. Allen Organics, the grandson of the founder. Um, you know, a lot of times ITEL's being painted as, as, you know, benefiting large corporations. This company has been here paying taxes since 1922. If you look at what they're actually paying in 2018, uh, their taxes just to Caddo Parish was over $71,000. They employed 27 people when they did their initial ITEP um, submittal. They uh, estimated they would have 25 employees. They've exceeded that. They provide 100% of health coverage for their employees and do a match on retirement up to 6%. So, so I, I guess my question, Scott, is did we did they report the wrong number it, to us? It was a miscommunication okay. with the process between the state and the locals. Okay. Um, it, it was just so are we abating a higher um, a percent? higher amount from four hundred eighty thousand to one point one for two machines? <coughs> so, so it's on that it's on that amount rather than the four hundred eighty at the state level it's at one point one, right. but it's not in concert with the amount that was approved with the ordinance done by this commission. Gotcha. That answers my question for now. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Hold on, Scott. Yes, sir. Wait, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting to be recognized. Thank you, Madam President. Yes. I just wanted to save you the up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. Following up on Commissioner Jackson's question, I just want to make sure I understand. So initially we had some, there, what is the truth now? Was it two machines? For, two machines. Okay. For 1.2 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. or 1.1? 1. All right, that's all I need to know. Thank you. So it's actually a greater investment than so we originally. It's a greater investment, and they've actually surpassed their original employment. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Are the three new direct jobs also included in this, or this all has it already that's been? Yes, okay. ma'am. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. So my question, and I guess anybody, will this fall under the new ITIP? the amended part was 80-20 instead of it could have been 100% because at the time we did it it could have been 100% but now it's 80-20. I think going back to the initial filing under the, the rules. initials. Yeah. The initial sure? rules that it was filed under. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. It'll be at the 100 I will check this. on that. Yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. And I'm then they would have to renew after five years for that additional potential five years. So right. it's done in two five-year segments. But this is under the mm -hmm. first set of rules that was at, a, at 100%. All right, might want to check on that. Okay. Because there's another company that had documentation problems and they had to go back through, and I think some of that changed. Yeah. This is part of the initial application process. It, it was initial and all that, but okay. they had to go back through again. And because I think the address was wrong, name changed or something. But, yeah. We have, um, yeah. Commissioner, we, that's a great question. We verified that with LED's legal counsel. That, okay. that was a hundred percent. Okay. And at the board, Commissioner um, Johnson, at the board meetings, we always look at what rules that the application was filed under and stick to those rules. Okay. So we don't confuse anything. All right. Because it can get confusing, yes, especially sir. to that owner. Right. All right. Okay. That's it. Okay. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yeah, uh, Scott, if you could get with me, we go over. And yeah, there may be some other potential uh, growth of this company. So. Yeah. Uh, cause my initial question was, 
did things go right, did it go wrong, sound like something went wrong, but ultimately we got right. Correct. So this sound. corrects that initial um, miscommunication. Okay. So uh, be glad. I think you sent me a note to go over, go out there. So uh, Yeah, I'd love to have you out there because I think there's even more growth. Potential. Okay. All right. Appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Organ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Can I see enough for the discussion? Please vote. Mr. Middleton. And that passes 11 0. Next item. Authorized resolution number 98 of 2019 support the PACT Act. So moved. Second. That was moved by Commissioner Vice President Chavez, and it was second by Commissioner Doug Dominic. Vice President Chavez, would you like to speak on your motion? Uh, thank you, Chair. Guys, this is really easy. I don't know if you had a chance to look over this, but uh, the, the federal government came down with the mandates, and one of our charges is animal services, so I felt it fitting that uh, we support this resolution. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Commissioner John Atkins. I'm sorry. I was just – I saw no attachment. Maybe I had a later agenda, but I'm just trying to understand what the PACT Act is. Right here. Okay. Uh, if it's there, I'll find it. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's it, Commissioner Atkins? Yes, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Uh, okay. Uh, so who will be enforcing this? Would it be um, local government? Would it be state government? Would it be federal government? I think it's federal. It would be federal, federal probably government. with the assistance of our local officers. Mm -hmm. All right, so basically what I'm saying is if you got a neighbor and they said that you're being cruel <laughs> to this animal next door and they call law enforcement out to somebody's house and then law enforcement basically says, okay, maybe so, I'm calling animal services, they come out and the neighbor says, well, the guy's doing this, this, this to the dog um, and he could be training the dog and not being cruel to the dog or cat or whatever it might be. So would that be now a felony charge because that person somebody called in and they said this on that person um the pet date deals with something um if i'm not mistaken it's called animal crushing i don't really think you're probably going to um i don't think it can be confused with training all right what about being chained up to the dog house because we got some activists here that says dog chained up as animal cruelty and they'll be calling somebody saying you're being cruel to them. Um, I don't think that would fall under here, but what will happen is our officers would go out either alone or in conjunction with the federal law enforcement and they would decide the severity of the charges and refer it to the proper enforcement agency. Okay, but if it falls under this PAC Act, which we say that we want to either support or don't support, then we're basically saying that <coughs> if they go out and people know that they don't went out and there's nothing that happens then now is a whole bunch of what we need to do in order to make this right type of deal uh, I, I just think we need a little bit more background behind this other than the few paragraphs of what the PAC Act is I I, um, I tried I to read all this and I saw it but it's like it's still too vague I can um, actually send you the text of the act prior to Thursday. Okay. To. That would help. So I can read the whole act. Okay. Yeah. Because I want to know what is considered cruel and consider what's not <laughs> considered cruel. We'll send it everybody. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we're also dealing with all types of animals, not just dogs, cats. I mean, horses and everything else. Goats, llamas. And, yeah. You're not some llamas right now. And so you might have some people training these animals, and people think that they're being cruel. <coughs> them, so. And then that's a felony, you know. Are we, we got some answers right there? Okay. Okay. Oh, you want to hear that? <laughs> yeah, I would try. Yeah, would you, would you uh, tell the commission? Would you just tell me about the squeaks? 
Hey, y'all doing? Hello. Um, I think what this is is once someone has been through the judicial process and they're found guilty of a felony, animal cruelty, then they are on that particular list. I don't think it's anything different than what we pretty much already do. All right, I just want to see the, <laughs> the documentation. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Travis. Appreciate it. Trust to verify. <laughs> That's it, Commissioner That's Jackson. It. All right. Okay. okay. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Well, you know, I was hoping to see the board kind of light up um, <laughs> with people wanting to, one, not only get more information, but two, uh, to ask why would we endeavor into this because it's a federal issue and not a local issue. But I do want to uh, be mindful, Attorney Frazier, Todd, that uh, this was signed into law. I don't know if there's anything to support. This was signed into the law according to the Congressional Journal on 11-25-2019. So it's it's already passed. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's, passed. it's already law. <laughs> uh, it's been signed into law. So what would we be supporting? And, and so I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad you picked up on that point, Commissioner uh, Dominic. Uh, this is something, uh, Commissioner Chavez, that is obviously uh, you're passionate about. Uh, I want to support you, but I want to be mindful that we recognize that uh, this, like it has been said on other occasions, uh, I think, I think you said it may be worth the sheet of paper that it's written on because it has already passed. And I'm not knocking what's going on. I think, I think the intention here is good. It had bipartisan support, uh, something that you don't often see in Congress these days. Um, but what I want to continue to impress upon this body is that uh, what is important to you is important to you. What is important to me is important to me. And the same that goes around. Uh, for the other individuals on this body, and we shouldn't try to reduce the importance of uh, what comes before this body. And we should try to find ways to support one another on issues that are important to us. And so uh, uh, I'm gonna be on the record as supporting it, but I wanna make sure that I also call out sometimes the double standard when we're, with regard to what we're doing. And um, this, like I said, this is already law, so it's, it's nothing really to support. But I know it's one of those make us feel good things. Uh, but we're also making a statement as well. We'll be making a definitive statement in support of something uh, as well. So just want to put that out there. And hopefully, as we go forward with some other resolutions that Commissioner Gaze Watts uh, or myself or Commissioner Johnson or Carthorn brings uh, before this body, that we don't kind of you know, get amnesia about it because that often happens a lot of times. And so uh, hopefully we're charting a new course today. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. It's at the end of the road, right? <laughs> Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, Madam President. Um, because it's an animal issue, I was going to um, ask that we would hear from um, director or assistant director, but we've done that already. So uh, that's what my request would have been. But uh, I'm good at this point. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Lynn Carthorn. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam President. Yeah, I had the same concern that uh, Commissioner Jackson had. So at this juncture, is this really a resolution since the law has already passed? Or maybe we need to bring the author of the bill down here and give him a proclamation. Of what you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> serious. Mr. <laughs> President? Would, would it actually still be a would, would this still be a resolution one day? Because you do resolutions to admonish and encourage people to support laws that are before you, whether it's at the Congress, whether it's at the State House. So since in as much as this is already passed, does is a is a proclamation more befitting as opposed to a resolution? Mm -hmm. I, I'm just I'm just asking. Is that a question for the yeah, chair or myself? That's a question for you. <laughs> okay. For the author of this resolution. Yeah. Uh, if I may? Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, I, I appreciate the sentiments and the conversation around the horseshoe. Uh, I know we've done many resolutions like this. Uh, whether it be for laws on the books or urging other bodies uh, to place laws on the books. I think one of the charges of the Cattle Parish Commission does include animal services, 
Uh, so I thought it fitting that we not only uh, set this resolution forward, but we stand <laughs> together in solidarity uh, uh, to say solidarity. that, yes, uh, <laughs> to say that, hey, we stand for this together. Uh, we stand for uh, the better treatment of animals. And within this, I know there's a lot to read, uh, but it stated uh, violent crimes. Um, so uh, un unlike the training, I understand that, uh, but there are situations that are in this, this act that is against the violent crimes of animals. Uh, and bringing them to justice. And I, I wouldn't think that anybody would be against that. Um, so I thought it would be fitting that we all came together on a resolution in support of this. If you'd like the author to come down, I, I would love to have uh, some of the congressmen come down here. I think it would be awesome. Uh, even the President of the United States, I doubt that would ever happen. Uh, but together, showing that we're on this, I think it would be fitting uh, for the parish. Uh, and like Commissioner Jackson said, maybe going forward, this is a good situation where we're coming together on some things, saying this is uh, the feeling of the of the people of Cattle Parish. All right, Commissioner, I'm not opposed to this, and I will admonish you that the, the next time you you have something like this, uh, you offer us some specificity into it and what you're trying to put forward. And I'm thinking you know, when you offered the motion that you just kind of laid it out for us, we would have. We would have had some understanding, so uh, I I can't be supportive of this. Thank you. Thanks, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Carthorne. Commissioner John Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. Well, I think I am often one of those that uh, pushes back on general resolutions, particularly when they involve things at the federal level. Um, however, I think we can all agree if we search our memories that w when we're talking about kind of feel good items that are non-controversial that are um, not in front of a legislative body at the time I think hopefully you all can recall that many of us have supported those resolutions so that's uh, I view this as a, as a non-controversial issue but if someone wants to vote against it I certainly support them in doing so thank you madam president Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner Doug Dominic. Yes, I just wanted to tell Commissioner Jackson, I'm at the end of the road, as I heard <laughs> Lyndon Johnson say, so uh, you can't say that to me but uh, too much further, but I think Commissioner Atkins put, puts it you know, bluntly that um, um, it's a kind of a non-controversial issue. And number two, it's not one of those issues, if you read the resolution saying, we are hereby going to send this resolution to the federal uh, representatives request that they do something so or to the state hopefully we don't get all bogged down on this thing uh, I <laughs> see everybody after I just said my uh, piece everybody popped back up and started talking again but um, I would ask that you know let's just move this thing forward to Thursday and we'll get a copy of the act if y'all have any issues and I guess y'all can look at it at that point okay I'm done Commissioner hey. Linden. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Thank you, Madam President. Um, basically, what I just was going to say is that this is one of those acts that have passed, just like we did with the um, all of these um, zoning violations that people didn't know about, and so this them pass, and people are gonna find out that they are committing a felony, and they thought it wasn't a felony, and we're gonna <laughs> have some problems. So this will be controversial. Then you know. But, I won't be here. but you won't be here to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it, Commissioner Johnson. That's it. Commissioner Mike Middleton. Thank you. Call for the question. Second. Second. <laughs> question has been called by Commissioner Mike Middleton. And that was second by. Anybody second? Everybody. Everybody. And that passes by acclamation. I know it does. <laughs> Kind of beat that horse to death. I'm sorry, that's an animal. Oh. Teeth. That, that might not be the right thing to say <laughs> on this one. That's a felony charge right there. That's <laughs> oh, oh, like a felony. Years, years, you'd learn there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> that's one too. That's a cat. Is this for the call for the question? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're oh. voting on call for the question. Oh, that's what this is? Okay. So oh, that's that that nice come up. All right, and the question has been called. It passes 11 0. Uh, next, we're voting on the resolution as it states. So, authorize and move to Thursday. Okay. 
Okay, and that passes 10 to 1. I'm consistent. Yes, you are, sir. Next, Next item. Authorize additional holidays for cattle parish employees. So moved to third. Second. Second by the chair. Commissioner Mike Middleton, are you on the board to speak? I am. Okay. Uh, this seems vague. Um, it's not saying the specific days we're talking about. How many days we're talking about for getting off? It actually would mirror the, the proclamations the governor will sign. I just got the first one uh, the day that he signed for as a legal holiday. Beside Wednesday, December 25th, it's Tuesday, December 24th. We expect to see another one before Thursday. So that's why it said mirrored. The right. proclamation. So, I'm, okay, I'm okay. So, we're talking about just the 24th and 25th that week. We can suppose that the 31st and 1st will be the That's next correct. Day. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Yes. Those stipulations, I'm okay with it. Yes. That's it. Commissioner Middleton? Yes, that's okay. it. Thank you. Vice President Chavez? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, guys, I'm just putting this on here, um, like you guys spoke about earlier, but. Uh, a lot of work won't be able to get done if our parish employees are trying to do things and the state is closed. So I think it'd be beneficial uh, not only for that aspect, uh, but we have a good team of people and uh, to show them our gratitude. Um, sometimes we can't cut a check, but we can give them the day off uh, and thank, thank them for their service for the year 2019. Uh, so I would like to see this uh, fully supported and passed to Thursday. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yes, I thought in the past we've always added or is it uh or specified that this did not include some essential employees or yeah, so something i don't see that today yeah, essential employees will continue to work and be responsive right that's normally within here and i didn't see that today that was my only concern so will that be addressed yeah. or is that just known it's just no yes sir it's just known there are certain right. operations we Cause, cannot shut down. okay because yeah. i'm about a form and so right. like i said in, in the past it's always included in east what is the emergency or essential personnel is always listed. So uh, I may just offer to add that on Thursday, okay. that language in there for a little bit more comfort. What's the language one name? Emergency or essential personnel. Uh, uh, that's usually a part of the resident, the part of the authorization that we do. Okay. I'll accept that. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson, you back on the board? I ain't never saying that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just going to ask the question that's normally asked every year, how much is this going to cost the pairs? That's what normally y'all ask that question. One of y'all asked that question. I just try to figure out. That's a, that's a question that's always asked. I don't really care, but that's a question that's always asked. You want to answer? Is that, a is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> Thursday will be fine. I mean, I mean be it's, fine. it's not an additional cost. We'd be having those salaries whether people were, were here or not. Uh, they would either take vacation or vacation time or they would have holiday time. So it's not an additional cost. It's not going to increase your payroll in any way. Okay. So that was a day that you did throw in there is it's an additional cost. Holiday. That's just a day you throw in as a holiday. So you switch it from regular work to holiday. I'm cool with it. I just, I just know that normally that question is always popped up. How much does it cost? So I'm just helping my counterparts out on asking that question. That's Thank all. you. So it has popped up today? Yes. I'm being consistent. <laughs> is that it, I'm Commissioner done. Justin? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Commissioner Matthew Lynn. Of course, that's an additional cost. It many times what staying an extra an hour on Thursdays would be. Um, the question that I have is the only pushback I've ever gotten on this is that people that go to pay their property taxes and can't get in to pay their property taxes because the courthouse is closed. And so, will people be able to pay their property taxes? If the state closed, the courthouse closed. Because it's because of the tax assessor. Everybody follows suit with what the state does. Well, everybody wants to pay their property taxes before January the 1st, and if we're closed, then they can't pay their property taxes. They pay it to the sheriff, right. right. But, the, but if the courthouse is closed, then they can't pay their property taxes. And they have to pay them that Monday. The courthouse would be closed anyway. All right, that's yeah. all, Madam President. The I just want to close anyway. All right. Thank you, sir. Vice President Chavez. Thank you, Chair. I'll make a motion to accept uh, Commissioner Jackson's amendment to state uh, essential personnel 
uh, still still at work. Okay. So you're just making another motion to okay. Just to and that was second by Commissioner John Atkins. I see no other discussion. Please vote. So they had to come to work, or, or they just be on call? Whatever I'll, they've done in the past. I'll let the administrator. Guys, please vote. Well, that's a question. Yeah. Get on the board. Woo. Okay. <laughs> I can't get on the board. I can't get on the board. She told you, man. Go into Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. I ain't mad though. <laughs> that passes 11-0. Next item, please. Discuss Commission Clerk selection process. Uh, Commissioner Jackson. Yes, um, I would like to uh, make a motion that we would set the uh, interviews for uh, selection of a new clerk for December 14th. 2019. That's a Saturday. Saturday. December 14th. Yes, I hope. I'm, yes, that's a Saturday. We, we got a, we got a couple problems oh. in that. We've got staff members that are already off, going to something because we're we're through with our meetings. So it means I've got something out of town. I've already paid for. It. <laughs> I can't be there either. So, My son so is I turning 16. That's his birthday party. <clears throat> well, dude, 15. I put my motion on the table. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> has you know, an amendment. Just let you know. Somebody <laughs> has an amendment. <laughs> I'm, I, you know. Well, I'm the 7th. Yeah. Is that this weekend? No, it's the following weekend. That's this weekend. You said the 7th. I won't be going on the 7th. Like seven. this Saturday. He said the 14th. What about the 15th? That's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. Okay, look, y'all don't do nothing on the Lord's Day. That's a Sunday. All right. 21st. I'm just saying, make a motion to amend it. Well, I'm trying to amend it, but I'm trying to get a, a, a poll. What's the, what's the clerk schedule? Well, I would change my motion if Commissioner Lynn will accept it to Saturday, December 7th. I'll accept that. He's ever what? Seven. This Saturday. I'm not here at LSU plays and I'm gone. That's <laughs> Is is my so calendar right here? Seven, fourteen, twenty first, twenty eighth. But you've got one of my lot of people in the days. The second be here Saturday. Let me let me say. Uh, I say you commission clerk. Hold on, I'm still on the I'm still on the board. Let me say. Uh, I think we got the list and it was like 18 people, 16, 16 people. If we can't, uh, I worked with Cattle Mills on Wheels last week and called 100 people in one day to let, notify seniors that we would be delivering their meals. If we can't pick up the phone and call 16 people and ask them to be here for something that they, they're seeking uh, on one of these Saturdays, then, you know, Shame on us for that. The other thing is, we should have Dr. Wilson, Todd, we should have number twos in place ready and willing to step up at any point. Uh, and so we can't, because what will happen is every day somebody will have something. <laughs> so we can't try to cherry pick around those days. I think this is something because folks are going to start going on vacation later toward the month. Uh, we're going to transition out as we move into December, I mean January. So this is something that we do need to start uh, getting the ball rolling on. And so I propose the 14th. That obviously wasn't a good date. Uh, I'm looking at the 7th. I'm trying to find a day where folks are not working and we can come down, knock those 18 out. We did a great job with the Registrar of Voters, which was, what, 20-something or 30 people? It was so, 17. so um, you know, let's just go ahead and knock it out. I have commitments on on the seventh and the fourteenth, but willing to make accommodations and work around my pro um, private schedule so that we can get this done, so this body can effectively transition uh, to a new body, uh, new members, as well as a new clerk, um, without having them having to rush into a position. So. Um, my, I've changed to the seventh. If there's anybody who wants to make another alternative, I'm open to that. I just want us to get the ball rolling. 
Thank you, Madam President. All right. I have no idea why it says Vice President Chavez. Oh, and then I pressed says, the button. Well, then you're on there again. So yes. it's duplicated. And it's got me back in there for some reason. Okay. Yeah. So are you requesting to speak? I am, but uh, I think we have a motion on the floor correctly? Correct. Okay. So yeah, but now I wanted, to, I wanted to speak under the discuss, not, um, well, I'll say it. Okay. Um, on, the, on the list that we received for the candidate that does not meet the qualifications, um, I think it would be uh, advantageous for the 12 people that were not met under the qualifications because I know a couple of these people are going to ask me, why was I not qualified? Uh, so I would like to know the 12 that did not make the qualifications. I would like a uh, written uh, notice on why they were not qualified. Um, and I can make that in a motion, but I, I think in all fairity to the 12 people that were not qualified, half of these I don't even know, I think they need to know that. Uh, I would like to know if I put in for a position and I wasn't qualified, I'd like to know why. Because uh, there's a lot of valuable people that are on this list that didn't make it. And I think we owe them an explanation on why they did not make that qualification. Um, well, just because okay. they're on their listed as candidates, they did not meet the qualifications, or are they not going to be interviewed? Correct. Correct. Which I don't think is right, because there's some people on here that I, I may not pull for them, but I think they have their day in court, so to speak. Well, I, I understand. That's. Well, I'm, I got the floor. Let me finish. Um, well. I, if Doc, you're telling me I don't have to make the motion that you guys will send us the information, then I'm then I'm fine with that. Okay, because I, I think these people should know. Thank you, Chair. Or Vice President Chavez, if you wanted to make a motion to interview those, you could also. Uh, okay, you can get back on the board if you like. Commissioner Matthew Lynn. This is a question for the current clerk. No. Um, do we have time to set a meeting after this coming Thursday's meeting? Is that too fast for notice? It's too fast, but you're also talking about it took, it took us six and a half hours to do 17 members for the register of voters. Right, but we're so, troopers. Well, we again, our schedule, we started setting things and everything ends Thursday at the end of our meeting. So, I would say no. Okay, it's, well, it's let me too, ask you it this much. way then. Is it's it illegal much. for us to do that? Is it illegal it's, for us to schedule this meeting Thursday after our meeting? Also, or, I can't say it's illegal. Donna, is it illegal? Can we do that? I mean, is it? can we physically do it to schedule it for this coming Thursday um, after our meeting? I think the problem that you're going to have is, is you can't get that notice if it's, it's going to be a public meeting. And I don't know that you have time to get that notice for that public meeting to the paper. If you can get them, get the notice uh, requirements met, then that's not a problem. What is the requirement? Um, I believe it has to be published in the official journal. Uh, then it's not possible. And that, that's not possible. What, well, hold on. Well, it needs to be published in the official journal for how long? Um, you just have to give 24 hours. For 24 hour notice. And right. The problem and is so today's Monday. And that would mean that we would have to have it done tomorrow, the official notice. No, your official journal requires their notices to be in by about right now for their publication on Thursday. And they're not published until on Thursday. So you're not going to be able to get it published in the official journal 24 hours prior to you asking. Or you so it would have to go in notice. tomorrow for it to be published in Wednesday's newspaper. There's no, no, there be no Wednesday's newspaper. Yeah. 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 Our journals are weekly. Oh, we would have to do uh, three books on the right. Commissioners, I'm system. sorry, we have a lot of other chattering okay, going on. But we, in other occasions, we have published in the Shreveport Times, which does publish every day. Haven't we done that in the past also? You do. You have to do both of them, but you're required to do the official journal. You're required. You're, okay. Yeah. And so this is another, another hazard of doing business with somebody that only publishes once a week. Okay. Thank you. That's all, Madam President. Okay. <coughs> Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Well, so I guess I guess my question I stepped out. Um, is there a reason why we're talking about publishing or 
What's the public? We have to give notice for our meeting. Yes, if we okay. do it Thursday after the meeting. Okay, so that's what. Yeah, that's and what so. precipitated the discussion. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, I shouldn't have been in the queue, Madam President, but my uh, but I was in there and I stepped out and I needed clarification on that. But I don't have any additional okay. to add. <clears throat> Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion, a substitute motion for December 21st. Second. Okay. A substitute motion for December 21st. At what time? Eight o'clock. What did we do the last ones? We did 8:30. 8.35. Okay, and that was second by Commissioner Doug Dominique for Saturday, December 21st at 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, Commissioner Johnson, would you like to speak on your motion? Uh, I think the process that we've done so far is, has worked for far as how we narrowed down the list of candidates. And I think just because somebody didn't make a list, we don't open it back up to do like uh, right. everybody that applied. <laughs> Um, because some people didn't apply because they knew they didn't have the qualifications. So the, now the change that in midstream will be totally uh, wrong to do. Well, be wrong to do because you got other people who would have been sitting on the side and said, well, I would have submitted one. And then you got a, a landfall of people that says, I, I want to be interviewed as well. So the process we've, we chose, we voted on it. And it's and it's it to the point where we're at today, and so now I think we just move forward. We're setting a date for interview, and so we'll do like we did last time. We interview them and we'll vote on it, and then on December twenty first, we can have a new clerk ready to take the the hem um, in January. That's it. That's it. Commissioner John Atkins. Thank you, Madam President. I'll be brief. I fully agree with what LBJ just said. Once a process is established and, a, and an interview cycle has begun or a, a solicitation cycle has begun, you can't change it midfield and start over again and <coughs> break the process. So I agree with what LBJ said. <coughs> thank you, Madam President. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Vice President Chavez. Uh, I'll yield to Doug Dominic since I already spoke. Y'all yeah, would okay. uh, concur Mr. with Dominic. Commissioner Atkins and Commissioner Johnson. You know, we, we agreed to have the, um, I guess, HR, legal department, review and determine which one met the qualifications. We need to rely on them. We have it narrowed down to 16 or 18, I'm not sure. Those are the ones we need to interview. Uh, obviously, we can't do it this series because of notification. Um, I think several commissioners are going to be out on the 14th. Don't like coming up on a Saturday. Definitely don't want to come up here on a, a Saturday to, to, to spend this time, but hey, I was elected to do that. And the 21st, um, just a few days for Christmas, not where I really want to be, but I think the 21st is a compromise on the best day, best Saturday that we can get this done. So um, I would say let's do it on the 21st. We'll come up here and try to get this thing knocked out. Hopefully, we don't have to spend all day, but we can get out here if we start at 8 30, maybe uh, in mid afternoon where we can go to a Christmas party or whatever you got to do. But uh, that way we'll get this clerk, hopefully, um, uh, you know, the selected at that time, that right. date, and we can, like Commissioner Johnson said, they'd be ready to go hopefully by January. Is it, Commissioner? Um, yeah, I just, you know, one thing that we kind of ran into last time was the issues of the background checks. Will we do anything like that, or we have to do that later, or Donna, the criminal or background? I don't want us to hire somebody that has a criminal issue or something like that. That will be um, done at the time you do your selection. So kind of like we did make a motion subject to the criminal background check type of thing? Right. Okay. Uh, I'm good. I think 21st is a good day. Okay. <coughs> Vice President Chavez. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, I'd like to make a substitute amendment just that uh, when we receive the list uh, from the eighth floor that if one of those do qualify um, one of these 12 that did not make it um, that they get added to the interview process uh, that we have at whatever date and I think that's fair that's us keeping with the process of that we what we set but if let's say one of these 12 slipped through the cracks and they were qualified but they made it to this list because maybe a clerical error or a misunderstanding of the uh, application or resume that was submitted that we'll have enough time to rebut that solution and stick it on the interview process of whatever we set forth. 
I think that's fair for the applicants that put their resume in, and I think that's fair for the 12 commissioners that put forth the prerequisites of what we agreed upon. Okay. Um, if I can get a second. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a substitute to the substitute motion on the floor. And um, Vice President Chavez has already spoken on that. Do you have anything else you need to add? Thank okay. you, President. Commissioner Stephen Jackson. Yes, and, and the only reason why I, I did not uh, hurry the second is I guess I'm lost at what 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 is the ultimate end goal or did something have we identified that something went wrong in the process or what has happened that, that brought about this motion is that you addressing it to vice president anybody who can answer okay. uh, <laughs> just before it's answered please note that you cannot discuss candidates qualifications right publicly with them not here right but if you can give a just a broad sure if, um I'll, I'll give a, a just a, a broad <clears throat> if one was stated they were not qualified because of this uh, but maybe they came back and uh, they showed the evidence that that it wasn't on the resume or it wasn't typed in that manner uh, I think at least the the chance or the opportunity to be on the qualified list uh, just so that we did our due diligence uh, would be well, fair to all now Commissioner if they if they got typos coming in <laughs> it's kind of a red flag isn't it would you, I, would you not agree, agree? I try to say that as, as gen general as I could without specifically stating yeah. one issue that I think was flawed. Okay. <coughs> so you think it wasn't, you think the, the, the mishap was on our end and not their end? Correct. Okay. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. Commissioner Atkins. I think we need to be careful about injecting injecting our own views into the process uh, at this point. I think we have to let HR make their interpretations and, um, and their legal judgments on wh who, who is qualified and who is not. And then once they have decided who's qualified, then we'll have the opportunity to express our own views through the interview process. But at this point, I think we need to be very careful <coughs> about the role we as individuals play in that process. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. When we vote, this is going to be it, or, or can just, I make another motion so after it for another step yes, in the we're, process? we're voting on the substitute to the substitute motion if we're through discussing. Nice, but it will be open for another motion to make after this Yes. Yes. for an additional part of the process. Yes, because okay. we're still under discussion. All right, I'll okay. wait. You're going to okay. wait? Yeah, okay. I'll make my motion then. I see no other I don't discussion. Get uh, Mr. Clark, if you would. I can't read you that because no. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to go back to the video. <laughs> sure. <coughs> did, did, I, go ahead. I think the substitute motion is for uh, interviews December 21st at 8.30 uh, with the caveat that someone be allowed to um, be added to the list if the process was flawed. Or if there was a clerical error. Okay. Correct. If they met That's the requirements. Right. I think we've that already we've, okay, I, I'm not sure at this point how you go back and right. do that if HR and legal have analyzed the requirements, but y'all got the votes. So All right. That's it. Yeah, Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, disregard, I'm ready to vote. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I Please. was hoping you would give me some more time to. <laughs> Please vote. So what sorry. do we vote on Commissioner Chavez substitute the party? Substitute. Yes. Like voting on LB's motion? Yes. yes. If this one doesn't pass. And that fails. All right. Now we are voting on Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson's motion for December 21st at 8.30 a.m. <coughs> We're just voting on the date right now? Yeah. And the time. Date and time. And the time. Date. Okay. December 21st, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 30 a.m. Okay. I'll be on vacation, so that's perfect for me. Be what? I'll be starting vacation, so that's perfect for me. Oh, I am too. <laughs> and that passes 10 0. Make a motion. I'm on the board. Mr. Settle bring breakfast that day. I'm on the board. 
Commissioner <laughs> Lyndon B. Johnson, you're not on my board. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm here on you, board now. you're on now. All okay. right. I would like to make a sec well another motion to continue the process that the interview ease will appear as they appear on our list in that order. And not alphabetical, but in okay. that order that they're on the list. Okay. Hey, uh, no matter to me, sir. And, second and and twenty minutes per interview. Max. That will get us out in four hours. Okay. The chair a second. All right. I see no other discussion. Please vote. And that passes 8-1. Did y'all count me? I think it's something going on with the system. No, I should have I should have been a year. Okay, so that passes 9-1. Someone else missed. Yeah, Commissioner been Lewis me. Johnson, you meant to vote no? Right. Okay. And that would have been on the list. So it's nine more? Yeah. Get your email. I'm just an HR okay. list. So, no so that passes nine to one. <laughs> Let the record reflect Commissioner Stephen Jackson's yes. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Doug Dominic. Um, when will we get the, you know, we got the list, I think we just got emails. Set tomorrow. When will we be able to look at the resumes? Will we have them in the next day or two? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah, we, tomorrow. tomorrow. We have to go back and redact some of the information. Y'all will out of scan there. those and send them to us? Yes, sir. Thank you. Are you on the board? Yes, sure. Uh, Hold on. Commissioner Lyndon B. Johnson, are you on the board? No. Uh, I don't know. Go ahead. Uh, Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I just had a, a message. Um, they want to know, did we vote on 11-1, uh, uh, ordinance mm -hmm. 5939? It was introduced, <coughs> and we introduced oh, ordinance uh, number right. 5939. It was introduced, correct, Todd? That's correct. Okay, I thought we did. We just introduced uh, it won't be voted on until January, probably. Right. Well, yeah, we don't we don't meet again until January. That's correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that they saw that. Thank you, Chair. All right. Mr. Clark. Okay, next we can go to communiques and committee reports. Well, citizen comments late. I have no cards. Commissioner Jackson, are you on the board? Yes. Okay. Uh, Travis or Kelp. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank sir. You, Travis. Thank you for your service. Um, mm -hmm. Travis. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm getting um, I've had some animal issues or dogs and cat issues, and I, do, do these things peak at this time of year? Do y'all do y'all see a peak in complaints this time of year? Or are you not familiar? Because it seems like it's it's getting out of hand a little bit, and so uh, are you I referring guess, to the barking nuisance? Barking, okay, so stray. That, that one particular barking nuisance that we spoke about is still ongoing in court. So I can't discuss that. Oh, that was the one from a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's still ongoing. I had one last night too. And, and as far as the, as far as the cats, we've been working with the citizens over there and taking care of that as well. But my issue is, is this sort of a increase around this time of year, or is this just normal? Because it seems like I, I normally don't get all of this mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. But it seems like I've gotten an uptick in activity. Or do people just think I'm going to be the one to forward it over or something? I don't know. Um, I'm uncertain, sir. Okay. I mean, every commissioner up here is probably contacted about animal items, and okay. we've been taking care yeah. of them, best so, of my knowledge. I mean, I haven't been called up here as much as we did in 2018, so that's a start for me. <laughs> so, my question is, <laughs> let, let's be serious. I, I'm serious. Okay. All right. Um, my question is, do we do, because I seen these things seem to take place in the evening, at night. Do we do anything where um, it is sort of like a, a sh maybe special operations type deal? Uh, we we participate in Operation T Bone sweeps and things no, like no. that. I, so You're talking about in the evening time? Yeah. In the evening time, once it's dark, I mean you have to think about officer safety as well. So we respond to emergencies once it gets dark. Right. So and we issue, only have one person on call that's in the evening. So, so the, the issue that ar that arrived that came up yesterday, and I, like I said, I was there to, to witness it. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, you know, I I feel sorry if I was a homeowner having to live next to that 
every night. Um, and obviously, by morning time, the situation is over with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I believe a, a animal service guy came out there first thing this morning, mm-hmm. but the homeowner is going to work, mm-hmm. so we we haven't made contact. Mm-hmm. The dog is probably now the homeowner is at work. The dog may be in the house mm-hmm. when the owner goes to work. Mm-hmm. So how do we uh, are we open to that? So they, they call us. If they, we ask them if they can videotape it. I'll call us when it happens. Whoa, whoa. we don't. We don't ask anybody. Well, hold, on, to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me talk to the well, the chief is talking now. <laughs> yeah, some, someone we can document the behavior of the nuisance that help us validate the complaints. Uh huh. Much about small coming from. So. So it's not uncommon that these things happen. So if this continues to happen at night, but it's not happening in the daytime. Right. Are y'all open? Yes, I'm not saying yes, do you do it now. Yes, Are y'all open to doing something in the after afternoon? And I'm not saying extend somebody's time out where they're running up mm-hmm. overtime or something. Maybe they come in two hours later or something. Or maybe they don't work, you know, that Friday or something. But how are we making sure that we address this issue to remediate yeah. that homeowner's complaint? If someone give us a complaint about a reoccurring nuisance, mm-hmm. then we will surveil and set Okay. To validate the situation, so we can either help mitigate it or eliminate it. Okay. I don't ever want to get y'all crossways. No, so. I mean, when what the chief executive start talking, to let him. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> if if it gets out of out of whack, it won't be on you. It'll be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, That's correct. That's uh, correct. So. But yeah, so if, if we could, because it, it, it's getting out of control in some areas, and like I said, I don't know if it's just in my area where these things are just starting to sporadically happen. Uh, but it's a concern to me. I'm going to always, and I appreciate y'all's patience in responding. Uh, y'all never say, hey, I'm on vacation or I'm off. Uh, don't call me. So I appreciate y'all in responding. But we've got to uh, make sure that owners know that if you have a pet, your responsibility is to yes, take care of that right. pet. Uh, the other thing is I'd like for us, who, I don't know who's in charge of animal service, but whoever is the next commission president, mm-hmm. hopefully uh, we will take a look at the uh, – uh, trap neuter release program um, because I understand that it it it's working in some areas but it's not working in other areas because like the one we had in North Highland where the pet population there's no there's no cap on the pet population so you can have somebody with 50 cats mm-hmm. right now and there's you know they're totally within their right to do it but they're not taking care of them uh, of the cats they're not looking after them the cats are all in somebody else's yard so then that becomes an issue or they just walk away from it and say, I don't want to do it anymore. And so uh, if we could, uh, I'm not knocking the program. I'm just saying we've tried it. We wrote it out there. I think we've had it in place for about two years now. Uh, if we could now come back and assess, and I'd love to get animal service input on what they think needs to be changed, what they think may need to be added, what needs to be taken away. But I think it's time for that. Roger that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Commissioner Wait. Dominic, is this for? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just wanted Still to let you know, Travis. I, just, I talked to him a few minutes ago mm-hmm. about an issue. He's already on it, taking care of it. Yeah. So I appreciate your hard work on mm-hmm. had a little dog issue. But Commissioner mm-hmm. Jackson, I think it just kind of ebbs and flows. You may have mm-hmm. three or four calls this week, and yeah. may go. I don't know. Just, yeah. It, it just it kind of ebbs and flows. I got you. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate your hard work. Thank you for. And I was like, man, I already got an email on my phone. He's yeah. already working on it. So yes, sir. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're not doing it, Doc. Don't don't think that they're not, because my understanding was that the truck was out there before 8 o'clock this morning yeah. to address that situation. So they're on top Hold of on. it. Yeah. Yes, sir. I th- if he leaves, we lose a quorum. So I'm good. So we got seven. We okay. don't have nothing to vote on. Okay. So I'm good. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, also wanted um, – to uh, thank uh, Cattle Council on Agents Meals on Wheels program. Uh, we did a great program this Thanksgiving where we uh, passed our meals to our seniors. Uh, we'll be doing the same thing for uh, Christmas uh, and MLK Day. I didn't realize that those seniors go without meals on, uh, on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas or the MLK holiday. So uh, Dr. Wilson, I'll probably be trying to ask and engage maybe the employee council if they're willing to, and all they have to do is deliver meals. It, it literally takes maybe 30 minutes to an hour, and they can go back and enjoy the holiday. But I'll get you some more information on that. Uh, the other thing is the Southern Law School feasibility study is going on. Yes. 
Um, um, if we could, Attorney Frazier, if I could get the cooperative endeavor that we've agreed entered into, because something seems to be going off course. Uh, I think they are mixing the House concurrent resolution in with the Senate concurrent resolution. And to my understanding is that the parish was stepping up to the plate to support the House concurrent resolution. And when I talk to consultants, I don't want to talk to them about one thing, and they want to hear about two, something else. So, uh, you know, uh, I have a conference call. I'm going to send you that information on the conference call. Uh, and if your time, if your schedule permits, if you could be on it or somebody else could be on yeah, it this week. It, and we're responding to that. You, you sent me a schedule already. Uh, right. That's on for the, the, that's the meetings. For the meetings right. But I'm saying with the Board of Regents. Okay. I think we have to have a conversation this week with the Board of Regents about, you know, are we going by what the Cooperative Endeavor says? Or are we following the language that was put in the resolution and the ordinance? Because the ordinance says that we were supporting House Concurrent Resolution 21 or 24. Now they're talking about Senate Concurrent Resolution 75 or 74. That's not what we said that we were doing. And so uh, I want to make sure that we have an apples to apples conversation here and not mixing things up. So. Um, because, you know, we didn't get opposition from the legislature, but it seems like I don't want the bureaucracy to kill the effort. And so um, uh, we'll be getting that information out to other commissioners so that you can participate. And also the public comment period is going on, so we need people, we need to encourage people to participate in the public comment process uh, because they need to hear from us about this law school. And so we'll be getting that information over to you as well. But. Um, I'll get with you, Dr. Wilson and Attorney Frazier uh, on those. Thank you. That, that's it. Thank you, Commissioner. Anybody else? I see anybody else on the board. Next, we have consent agenda. Move to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn. Okay. Move to adjourn.